What's good, Blessed Podcast? Welcome back to the channel. This is your boy, Jared. Y'all, this migrant situation has gotten out of control, and things have taken place up in New York. Several migrants, I believe it was five migrants under the age of 25, have gotten arrested. And the reason why they got arrested is because they were whooping up on the cops. Now, I want to keep, I want to say this in perspective. If it was a black man or a black woman that did any of this stuff to a cop or several cops, five black men or black women doing this to cops, it would have been something that we have never seen before. Yes, there, I'm saying. It would have been a bloodbath. Now, this is the result of what's going on. NYC, NY, NYPD is starting to arrest migrants. Now, let's 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 go ahead and start. Several asylum seekers were recently arrested after an attack took place on the NYPD right here in Times Square. But after being controversially released, they may have fled the city and the country. And critics say this kind of thing is probably going to happen again. Plenty of questions tonight about the after right where this incident took place. Now, some of the people involved have been arrested, released. Others never got caught. And there's a manhunt underway for them right now. Where are you guys from? Arizona. Arizona. If people beat up the cops in Arizona, do they get released without bail? No. <laughs> now, why those folks walked free, that's its own controversial issue, which we'll get to. But first, it's important to understand that although there seems to be mass outrage over all of this from everybody, including citizens and the police, what many people don't realize is that this kind of thing in New York, an attack against police or something crazy that just goes unpunished, that's how things normally work in New York. And look at this. Late last year, police officers were assaulted after asking people to stop smoking cigarettes in the subway where there's cameras everywhere. The officer in that incident ended up in the hospital. And look at this other crazy story nobody heard about. Someone had an illegal weapon in the subway, committed a crime, and they were also released without bail. And what that means is this story, the controversial arrest and release of these suspects, is part of a much larger thing happening here in New York that is very frightening and that nobody really wants to discuss. And that's why we're not only going to break down what happened between police and the asylum seekers, we're also going to go over why the district attorney released them without bail, and we're going to look at actions the NYPD is now taking that some people think are controversial and retaliatory. But first, we've got to go over why the NYPD was attacked right here in one of the busiest, most iconic parts of New York City. I'm going to just say this. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I have to do this because of copyright. Shit, please tell me I won't break this damn desk. Okay. I've never been up to New York. I don't know. I've never been. I want to go, but was everything that's going on, I don't know if I'm ever go up there. I've heard it's nice. I heard it's very big. But I don't, me personally, I wouldn't feel comfortable going up to New York. Now, if I'm going up there to get a project car or a car or something, because I've seen one that I found for 1500 bucks in uh, New Jersey, a 1970 Dodge Polaris. Wagon that I'm heavily eyeballing right now. I want to go up there. Now, this right here is something that's going to be really need to be talked about. And officers attempt to take down one of the men in yellow, pictured here, and then it gets ugly. He saw the video. Reprehensible. Cowards. It starts with so as you can see from the video, the police, they were here and they were just out on a routine patrol. But then they saw something suspicious happening and decided to move in. And then they put their hands on one of the individuals and that's when everything took a turn for the worse. Now these officers, they're armed. And even though this was an extremely tragic incident, armed officers could have decided to escalate things further. And the fact that they didn't shows incredible restraint on their part. But to add insult to injury, the controversial actions taken by Manhattan's district attorney probably made the whole situation way worse, as you're about to see. T.A. Bragg, why did you not? I'm gonna say this. If a cop would have got his ass whooped by a black person, there's no restraint. See, this only proves to me one thing. They teach cops to restrain themselves. But 
for the most part, their choice is to escalate the situation as a whole. Not de-escalate, but escalate by firing a shot or firing several shots at said suspect. Let's continue. Ask for bail. Why didn't you ask for bail? District Attorney Alvin Bragg trying to get away from questions about his decision to release five migrants charged with assaulting two NYPD officers in Times Square. Do you have nothing to say to the citizens of New York? No bail. You're free to go, but you have to come back. That's essentially what these guys were told. And critics say that the failure to protect officers and the public by keeping these people off the streets is sending the wrong signal. Basically, it's letting the crime world know that there aren't a whole lot of consequences here for doing something like this. Now, normally, it's the district attorney's job to protect the general public by keeping dangerous criminals off the streets. And it's not like bail denies someone their freedom. You post bail and you get the bail back as long as you come back. And look, I don't know as much about the law as the district attorney does, whether you agree with him or not. But critics say he's controversially claiming that there wasn't enough evidence to hold these guys in lieu of bail in the first place. This is one of the folks who was released. And regardless of whether or not he's innocent, this isn't a respectful way to act around law enforcement. And now that they've been released, the only thing holding them accountable to come back to court is the honor system because they're out on their own right now. They could be anywhere. And nobody seems to know where that is. So you're telling me that five migrants that beat up on NY, N, NYPD cops are now freely roaming the United States because they don't know where these people are. They could be in New York. They could be in Florida. They could be in California. They could hell. They could be in damn Detroit. You don't know. They don't. They release these people without bond. Just freely. Just now. You saw old buddy didn't want to answer the questions because he know he didn't fuck that. He knows it. He knows he didn't fuck that. He released these people. And now, you don't know where they are. After you've had two cops get their ass whooped by these five dudes. First of all, you ain't, as a sit, as a person, you're not whooping up on me. I'm going to make sure I put somebody in the hospital. That, that's just me. But you got your ass whooped because you restrained yourself. So hell no, nah, fuck the restraints. Uh-uh, no. I'm whooping your ass. You you try me you you get in these hands, bro. I don't care. You and your little friends getting your ass whooped. Hey, I don't give a fuck. Okay, that's that bullshit. <laughs> Shit. Now, the latest information that the police have is that the suspects fled the city after using fake names to obtain bus tickets through a non-profit. People are saying that by using a bus to get out of town through a non-profit, they likely would have encountered very few police on their way out of the state. And that probably means they won't be back in court. But this raises a much larger, more concerning question. Why did these four individuals be released on their own recognizance? Our criminal justice system is upside down. Yeah, you know, a lot of people, not just in New York, but in the entire country, have very similar questions. But the way that the courts work in New York City is why these guys were released. And that's because there are two schools of thought on how to prosecute crime. The first is to prosecute everybody and lock them up and throw away the key. And the second is that over-prosecuting crime or prosecuting the wrong person for the wrong crime is going to have a negative impact on society as a whole. So we should be very careful before we turn the wheels justice. And that explains why the district attorney said that there wasn't enough evidence to hold everybody that was on video. He didn't want to prosecute the wrong people. And the reason people say not enough video evidence is kind of ridiculous is because Times Square is one of the most heavily surveilled places in America. And that's why the release of these suspects, as outrageous as some might find it, that's just how things work here in the city. But there's another... Again, they got released and, and they're talking about there's no there's not enough visual evidence to keep them incarcerated. If you have hundreds of cameras in that vicinity, you telling me there's not there's not a slew of evidence? 
There's not hundreds, if not thousands of hours of footage. You're telling me that there's not enough video evidence. Don't these cops wear body cams? Oh, this is not making any sense. Another problem, and that's because New York City is a sanctuary city, and that special status may have actually made things easier for the suspects to escape and possibly evade justice. Now, there is some question whether the city's sanctuary city status would keep these men from being deported until after they are convicted. However, the mayor's chief of staff today says if federal authorities wish to deport, the city will cooperate. So it sounds like city officials are deferring to the federal government on the issue of deportation. And as much as the governor and other folks are crying for deportation for these same individuals, that's not something the city has any control over. And it's not like New York is a sanctuary city by accident and it might be part of the reason why the suspects were so able to easily find a sympathetic not-for-profit that would help them out without asking too many questions and the reason they probably went with a non-profit for the bus tickets instead of the city who also offers them for free is because if you go to the city's reticketing center it's surrounded by police they're gonna know exactly who you are you're gonna be on camera and sometimes across the street from where the city is giving out free bus tickets non-profits do things like food giveaways and clothing drives and they even hand out resources like this pamphlet right here in Spanish that helps connect new arrivals with legal support, housing support. But it seems like the generosity of local New Yorkers was taken advantage of. As well as the generosity of the court system. But where exactly could these folks ultimately be headed? Are they gonna stay in America or go somewhere else? Information coming from a high-ranking police source reveals the suspects may be headed for the Mexican border. This says they're due in court on the 20th and calls grow louder for them to be deported. So if these guys are headed to Mexico, I don't know how they're going to make it back here in order to go to court on time. They might not make it. But as it turns out, some of the suspects were recently arrested in Arizona, and it remains to be seen what their ultimate fate will be. And even if they don't come back to the city, there will probably still be some sort of court case and charges that are filed against against these guys. They may in fact be convicted. If that does happen, there could be arrest warrants for them. So they'll probably not do themselves any favors by coming back. But only about half of the folks involved have been apprehended so far. And there's a manhunt going on now for the rest. This morning, the search continues for six asylum seekers. Governor Hochul had this to say on Thursday. Get them all and send them back. Don't, you don't touch our police officers. You don't touch anybody. Oh, now she want to get, oh, now she want to get some big cojones and out and say, oh, go back. Oh no, 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 boo boo, no, no, boo boo, huh? No, it don't see it don't work like that. You allow these people to cross the border by telling them that you're an asylum, you're an asylum, what's it called? You're an asylum, you're a sanctuary city. Gave these people money. You don't ID these people before they come into the country, and now you're talking about you don't touch our cops. After you allowed several of them to get their ass whooped because of your French toast up laws and court, uh, cover, uh, court system. That don't make sense. That dog don't hunt. Nah. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. Nah. You allowed these people into your city. You allowed these people into the United States without even identifying them seeing who these people are that's coming in and now that people are getting hurt because of your reckless decisions now you want to sit here and be like oh we got to get them out of here because we're because we're loot because uh they're hurting our citizens after now you after you after you literally allowed this crap yeah see that's the problem after something happens now you're wanting to now you're wanting to sit here and act like everything's oh not okay now we now we get that yeah okay yeah let me know how that let me know how that works because you've done this to yourselves you can't blame american citizens for this you can't blame anybody else that's all on you so what i'm do is i'm gonna hop off of here like, share, subscribe channel, support the podcast on Spotify.com. This is your boy Jared, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Thank you guys for listening. Bye, guys.